Nordita is, is one of the most prestigious international institutes for theoretical physics in the world. Now I can say this because I come from the United States and it is a really big brand name in the US, more than in Sweden, more than in, the Nor in some of the Nordic countries. So I think it's my job to make sure that everybody here knows how wonderful we are. Nordita was founded with the mission of doing breakthrough science and I, it's my, I, I want to make sure that happens. We have one month programs and sometimes shorter conferences where we bring in visitors from all over the world and this gives them an opportunity to get together and think about science in a very relaxed, comfortable atmosphere. Together people come up with new ideas. So this is a breeding ground for imagination and creativity for all of these people. They get away from their usual jobs they're, they're, not, they're not teaching while they're here. They're not doing service for their universities. They're doing science. Nordita is interdisciplinary. So we bring in people from many different areas of physics. And what can happen is that conversations between a particle theorist or a condensed matter theorist, that these conversations can lead to new ideas in, a, in, in new directions. My field is theoretical cosmology, and the big question that I'm trying to answer is, what is the universe made of? If we take everything from our daily experience, your body, the chair you're sitting in, the air that you're breathing, the walls of this room, the planets, the stars, everything that we know about, that it's made of atoms, atomic material, and all of that adds up to only 5% of the universe. So if, if I draw a pie picture, there's only a very small slice that we understand, and the rest, the other 95%, it's made of dark matter and dark energy, and that is what we have to understand. Scientists think it's some new kind of fundamental particle, not neutrons, not protons, something new. And we're working very hard to try to discover what it is. One of the best candidates for the, the dark matter is a new kind of particle called WIMPs. So that's for weakly interacting massive particles. These things weigh maybe a hundred times as much as a proton and you don't notice them because you, there, there would be billions going through you every second but they're not interacting with your body. They don't have strong interactions which is what holds your nuclei together but well, we think that, that they might have something called weak interactions. And this is the kind of interaction that's responsible for some kinds of radioactivity. And this is called a weak interaction because it's very, very weak, which is why they go right through your body. Maybe one interacts with your body in a month, but it does nothing. I, I actually did the calculations for how much this should happen and what kind of interactions there would be. And we made predictions for experiments. People are building these experiments. These experiments have to be underground because you have to eliminate competing signals. Only these weak, very weakly interacting particles would get through to the underground laboratories. These would be underground mines. These would be underneath mountains. Now we have experiments that are seeing something, some possible detection, and we're trying to understand what's going on. So the dark matter hunt is in a very exciting state right now and we're trying to understand what these signals mean and whether or not dark matter has already been discovered. So that's the current status. I have been very impressed by the, the climate for women in science in Sweden. It's a, it's a very less imbalanced society, as far as I can tell, than what I'm used to in the United States. So in terms of maternity leave, there's a giant one. So you, I, I see that people have, both women and men, have a year away from teaching when they have children. Well, this is, uh, I think, very civilized, frankly. And I'm very impressed by this, by this tone that is set by this idea of equality between the genders. Now, Sweden does not yet have enough female professors. But if you start from the beginning with an, a, a positive workplace, then I think I'm, I'm I'm hoping that this is something that grows. 
when I came here previously before accepting this position, I, I felt that I was having conversations and we were just talking about either how things are working in terms of science or the actual physics and I forgot about my gender for the first time in my life. Now that is a really nice way to work. <laughs>